You're going to have to say that again, because I have no idea what in the F asterisk asterisk K you're trying to say, I inform the sparkling conversationalist that just conversed in little more than grunts and growls. Nobody's spoken that language in thousands of years, the young man behind the counter informs me, seemingly confused as to how I didn't understand him the first time. Cool, can I get my food now? I ask, impatiently. I really don't want to get mixed up in anything today. I don't think you understand, that language. It's more than dead. It's extinct. How do you know it? I pinch the bridge of my nose with an exasperated sigh. It's damn near midnight, and I don't feel like going through the whole process of explaining my skill. Congratulations, I don't care. Can I get my food now? Not until you tell me how you know that language, he hisses at me. My family have kept that language alive, but secret, for generations. Well, then, it's not very extinct, is it? I lean against the counter, the exhaustion of the day catching up with me. Look, man, I just have this ability, to speak the native language of whoever I speak to. Can't understand it, but it just comes out of my mouth. It's useful in a traffic jam, but that's about it. I yawn, my eyes drifting shut as I feel myself growing even more tired. So I don't know your f asterisk asterisk in bullshit language, I just want some food. I don't believe you. Once again, I do not care. My food, please. He purses his lips and completes the transaction. Finally. After waiting for what feels like an eternity, I finally get my tray of food, and simply nod to the cashier as I head over to the closest empty table. Being the only customer in here, it's not hard to find one. Before I even have a chance to eat, my newfound irritation sits down across from me. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Look, can I just enjoy my food in peace? Taking another look at my burger, I mutter to myself, okay, maybe, enjoy, is pushing it. If what you told me about your ability is true, then we could use your help, there's a word we've lost, a very important word. The only word left unknown in the language, in fact. He leans forward a bit. And it's the word that opens an ancient safe, in which who knows what kind of riches are stored. If you help me open it, I'll give you some of it. I stare at him, the cogs working in my tired brain. Eventually, I decide to just humor him, after all, money is money. I'll open it, so long as I don't have to speak to anyone else in your family. He nods, and I sigh as I quickly scarf down my food. We head outside, exchanging no conversation whatsoever, and share a quiet car ride to his home. It doesn't take very long to get there. It's an old house, maybe 70 years old, judging by the area and the style of the design. He leads me to a shed behind the house, and opens it with a key from his belt. This better be a decent amount of money, because you're probably very fired right about now, I mutter. He chuckles at that, and silently opens the doors, letting enough moonlight in for me to see the single box on a small table. It looks like it's steel, and it doesn't seem to have any seams at all. It's a code, and we know all the numbers in it, expect the zero. We don't know what that translates to. The code is just the numbers 1 to 9, and then 0. Could you say that, and maybe your ability will automatically translate it? I nod, and approach it while clearing my throat. I speak as if I'm speaking to him, I don't know what the limits of my ability are in terms of just speaking aloud to nobody in particular. I list 1 to 9, and, my heart pounding and nerves on edge despite how tired I am, I say the final number, 0. As soon as I say it, my throat feels like it's on fire. I fall to me knees, coughing and hacking, and feeling as if I'm going to die. Tears come to my eyes, and I feel something coming out of my throat, not through my esophagus, as if I'm vomiting, but my trachea. It's painful, but I don't think it's causing any kind of damage. One huge cough brings with it the cessation of pain, and the sound of metal falling onto wood. I open my eyes in confusion and see I've coughed up a metal disc of some sort. What the f asterisk asterisk k, what is this? I exclaim, confused and a bit scared. I look over at my new friend. What happened? He looks pale, and just as confused as I am. 
Why you re-speaking English now, he informs me. I look back down at the disc, even more confused than before. I frown, not really understanding what in the hell is going on. Regardless, I wordlessly follow a faint instinct. I pick up the disc, stand, and press it against the cube. The disc is immediately absorbed into its mass, and I jump as a loud mechanical clunk echoes throughout the shed. Whirring and mechanical sounds persist, and I faintly hear a door open and confused voices approaching the shed. I swallow back fear and look up at. I never got your name, I announce. It seems so trivial to think of, while a solid cube makes otherworldly sounds. But it's all I can think about, oddly enough. William, he introduces himself. You? Simon, I reply. I return my attention to the cube as the sound suddenly stops, and become acutely aware of people watching me from the doorway. I hear William explaining stuff to the new observers, but find myself captivated as the cube slowly opens, transforming in ways that shouldn't be physically possible. Out of it comes a single, glowing stone. Despite my better judgment, I reach out to pick it up. No. Someone behind me exclaims. It's too late, even as they grab my shoulder, my hand has closed around the enigmatic treasure. I feel a sudden surge of energy, and my vision goes white. I feel myself fall to the floor, and then, nothing. 